Um, okay, so in case anybody doesn't know what Bird is, you should just give the the commercial. Yeah. So uh, Bird operates a fleet of micro mobility vehicles, and I know Kevin, you know something about micro mobility. Uh, scooters and bikes in 300 cities around the world in 32 different uh, countries. Right, and uh, Calgary is one of our one of our number one. Markets. Calgary is a top five market for us in North America. Not so much right now with the colder weather, but yeah. if you came here during Stampede, you would have yeah. seen a lot of scooters driving around. Right. So uh, there's a really interesting story in terms of how um, Stuart became president of Bird Global, um, which started with um, Bird Canada. Maybe you can give a little walk through how, yeah. we, how we created Bird Canada. Yeah, uh, I will give the very short version. So I, uh, years ago, I, when I did Sirius XM, which was they were mentioning, Sirius and XM were originally two separate companies. A uh, guy by the name of John Bitov and myself started that business in Canada. We merged it with Sirius and we, we sold it to Sirius XM in the US. But the idea was it was a bit of a, a license play with the CRTC. We had to operate the business in Canada because you needed to be Canadian to operate a broadcasting license in Canada. So with that kind of knowledge of how to do one of these sort of licensed business startup kind of deals that have a, with a U.S. business, um, I, I stumbled upon Alex Baker on a flight to uh, San Francisco one day who uh, convinced me to talk with you about yeah. trying to bring Bird to Canada in a similar fashion, right. which we did. And everything was going very swimmingly, uh, very you know, nice, nice profitable company. Uh, we were profitable about 16 months after we launched, um, very successfully kind of going along, growing incrementally every year. Um, until Bird started running into their, Bird, the mothership, the U.S. version, started running into their own their own challenges, uh, being a little drunk on early, easy venture money early on. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, and uh, started running out of their of their own capital, having their own issues, right. and we decided to take the plunge and double down our investment in Bird by taking over the global company to try and right the ship there with the experiences we had in yep. Bird Canada. Yeah. Um, so, so I want to pick up on one of the things you just said. Um, we have just like the whole venture industry, and Alex talked about this uh, this morning has you know, almost rapidly overnight shifted from um, uh, cheap, free, abundant capital to basically zero. Right. And you were running um, you know, Bird Canada um, very efficiently. We didn't, we, we didn't have unlimited capital, but Mothership did. Um, I'd like to have you share your experiences of operating a big global company um, with hundreds of millions of, of revenue that had basically operated with free cash and suddenly you know, waking up one morning as you're transitioning this business to pure profitability, um, that, you know, what's, it, what's that like? Yeah, well, I guess free cash in quotes, not free cash. <laughs> no, not free cash, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, if it had free cash, we, you know, we would have a different story. But um, no, so yeah, that, that, that is a big change, right? It's a, big, it's a change in, in people and mindset and how you approach everything. I mean, this was a company that, uh, you know, for those that know the company, was a fairly high flyer, uh, very highly, you know, two, three billion dollar valuation at its peak, um, you know, a billion dollars raised, and uh, when we took it over, was you know, in a different place, um, and we really had to accelerate that change from um, sort of freewheeling, free spending to mm -hmm. being more focused on profitability, which is how we ran Bird Canada, partially by accident, partially right. on purpose. We didn't raise a bunch of capital, so we had to be frugal and we had to be profit profit minded. Um, and I'm, you know, from a different, I guess, different genre of startups where we were always focused on profitability. So that mindset is a different ball game. It starts, you know, it's, it's really take changing. I, I guess the easiest way to describe it is I think they thought of themselves a little bit as a technology company that happened to d do scooters. And our version is it's a transportation company that has technology that enables it to work, yeah. which is a different ball game. A transportation yeah. company is a transportation company. It's often blue collar. It's about fixing vehicles, making sure in the right place in the right time, deploying them, charging them, all the, the nuts and bolts and the blue collar work required to make it work properly. Yeah. And they had strayed from that and they weren't as involved in the cities. And uh, you know we had to make sure the business was refocused on that. It was a lot of work. It's so, still a lot of work. And, and so when we talk a lot about you know you have to run a... You've got to grow revenue. You've got to get to profitability as quickly as possible, which you guys are, are working on. Um, uh, at the same time, you can't. It, it, you're not trading off growth, right? You still have to grow. Yep. So how do you balance all of that? Uh, it's it's challenging. I mean, I think you have to sacrifice the stuff where you uh, you're saying, you know, we're not making money in this market or this area or this city, um, and you know, we hope to get there one day. You kind of have to make those hard bets and say, you know, what, we're just going to cut cut bait. Uh, Germany is a great example. Bird had a lot of business in Germany, in Berlin, every city in Germany. The problem with Germany is it's overly competitive and the revenue is quite low on a per ride basis. So we had to make the difficult decision to pull out of Germany. 
Uh, we pulled out of a whole bunch of markets in the U.S. that were the same thing. Um, and it's really, you know, and on the growth side, it's really focusing, doubling down on those areas where you can grow profitably. Yeah. And that's a tough decision because everyone everyone just wants growth, growth, growth. And that mindset was still at the company. We said, no, it's not about growth, it's about profitable growth. Yeah. And that means exiting a lot of those initial growth opportunities. Um, the uh, so before we got before we took over Bird Global, they spacked. Uh, I think people are having a lot of um, you know benefit of hindsight to say that spacks were not a good thing. What's your view, having lived through both sides of the equation on that? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've, look, there's so few spacks. Uh, I mean, like you count them on your hand, the, the ones that were successful, and I, and Bird was obviously an example of one that was you know admittedly not successful. I mean, you know, it's the it's basically a private public company at this point. Um, you know, I think it, it, it enabled them to get some capital, but unfortunately, I think it, it, they had its expectations of a higher amount of capital, and because they fell short, it actually made the problem worse than better. Yeah. Um, so I think, look, I think, um, I think SPACs were uh, good for a small portion of that group, but I think for the bulk of them, it, they didn't really work out. Yeah. Um, in, in hindsight, what would, you have, it, it, what would you have done if you were making a decision? At that time. Well, I think, look, I think Bird, I mean, aside from the SPAC piece, I think Bird made a couple of wrong turns down the road. Um, we talk about them a lot. Um, the biggest one that people might, may, or not, may or may not know by looking at the industry is the type of vehicles they deployed. There was a decision made a few years ago at Bird uh, Global, which was to continue to use scooters that were designed in-house mm -hmm. that didn't have batteries that were swappable. That might seem like a small deal, but the difference is when you're dealing with a 1,000 scooters in Calgary and you can actually take the battery out and leave the scooter behind and just replace the battery as opposed to picking up a 60-pound scooter and putting it on a truck, that's a huge difference in OPEX. It's a huge difference in capital efficiency. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, Lime and others made that move to their to their credit, and they have sort of since accelerated away from from Bird because of that fact. Another, you know, and there's a few other factors on the operating model as well, changes they made yeah. that were you know not good decisions. So Bird is a public company, so I know you can't say anything outside of the quarterly statement, you know, process. And I know you're a, uh, a lawyer, so you're always the one who says can't talk about that. Um, but can you share the transformation of the business in the last ten months? Like, you know, what what have we accomplished? Yeah, well, I mean, the, I think the biggest thing is the cost structure. This is a business that when we took it over, you know, had about you know two hundred and something million of revenue and about two hundred million of opex. So that's you know after the you know, gross margin and another two hundred million of opex, we've cut that by fifty percent so far. We got another chunk to go. Uh, so that was a huge difference. Uh, we cut the personnel by probably fifty percent at the company. Um, tough decisions, and it's tough to make those kind of changes. Um, it's just, you know, it's a lot of basic stuff. I mean, this is a company still which had its sort of heart in Silicon Valley, and when you have all of your engineers and your, and your, and your um, coders and all that located in the valley, that's a premium. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot, most companies today start kind of out, yeah, out in other places, Canada, Eastern Europe, wherever. They use Mob Squad, Irfan, places like that. And um, uh, you know we're still in that process. So there's a lot of changes made today on the cost structure. As I said, we pulled out a bunch of cities. We stopped making vehicles in house. So we did, a, and we just finished an acquisition as well in the last month. Um, in the minute and a half that we have left, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs that you met today and that you've seen their presentations? What's the advice that you have for them in the current market environment? I think nothing that people don't repeat a hundred times, which is, you know, you have to, it's always, it's about measured growth and it's about profitability, which is easier said than done. And, you know, it's about a mindset and it's really about, you know, uh, you know, dealing with the cards that you're dealt and not trying to go beyond your means. And if you just can't make it work on, on what you've raised, then, then maybe you're, you know, maybe you need to make some changes. And it's, uh, it's basic stuff, but it's easier said than done. It's a real mindset shift because a lot of people coming out of school starting businesses are still of the mindset of three, four years ago, which is hard to take change. It's a different, total different mindset. Yeah. Great. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having me.